Welcome guys, let's uh, discuss a new development in the polity and it's about this um, NNPP, New Nigeria People's Party of uh, Kwan Kwaso, a chieftain of that party by the name of uh, Baba Galadima, a spokesperson of the Presidential Campaign Council. He took on P2B again without minding that the Campaign is over. Election has been done uh, with, and everybody should uh, move on, except uh, with the outcome in the court process. He had an interview recently with Punch newspaper, and he said a few things, so many things, but I'm just going to pick two of them. They asked this old man, this typical Nigerian politician, Boba Galadima, about the open-mindedness of uh, Atiku Abubaka, Bola Tinubu, and Pito B. Briefly, he said that Atiku Abubaka only minds himself during election. He comes to Nigeria, makes money, then go back and start living his life in Dubai until the time comes again. But it's the two things he said about Pito B that I want to look into. Before we dig into that, please. Kindly help us subscribe to this channel, share this information, give us a thumbs up so that YouTube will now recommend this video to more people. That's how they work. So he said, let me read it out so you can hear it from him before I go into the analysis. He said, if you look at Obi, even there in Anambra State, where he comes from and governed for eight years, you cannot count five mosques. This is the sin that P2B has committed, though. He, you cannot count five mosques the time that P2B was uh, governor of Anambra State for eight years. The second offense, he said there was a time he, P2B, designed a passport for Northerners to identify them in Anambra State. So, he said he can't be talking of national unity and been doing such things. We in NNPP and they are like water and oil. We cannot miss. So he was talking about why the two parties couldn't work together. So Buba Galadim at his age, over close to 80 or thereabout, and everything he has done in politics, the sin that Pito will be committed for eight years in Anambra State is that you cannot count five mosques in Anambra State. And secondly, that he designed not even identity card. He said a passport for Northerners in Anambra State. Now, I don't know whether it's a Niger passport he designed for them or he designed a Rewa passport or... A Nathana passport, besides the Nigerian passport that we know. This is an argument, an accusation they have come up with over and over and over again. And P2B has told the whole Nigerians, if you produce one Nathana that have the identity I produced, or who said I made an ID card for them, I will stop contesting for the presidency. The election is gone. He's done with. And this old man is still lying from both sides of his mouth just to call a dog a bad name in order to crucify the dog. What has identity card for now? I don't, and it, it doesn't exist. Even Northerners living in Anambra State have come out to um, testify that Obi was nice to them, that there was a time they had problem. He's the only governor that have visited them since they were in Anambra State. And they still happen on identity card. You know, those of them that claim that they are highly educated, a spokesperson of a political party, is still today talking about lying. What you know is not true. What has he did identity for not an ass? Therefore, he cannot govern Nigeria. What does that mean? For goodness sake, even if you did identity for somebody, 
that you carry identity, you are from another state living here. So what, what, what is really the problem here? Is it that if you have that identity, they will not sell something to you, they will, will arrest you, or you cannot get accommodation? What was the identity for? Who has this identity? So this is, and they permitted him to go away with this lie in this interview. But this is uh, just one of them. The worst, the worst is that this man said that during eight years will be was governor of Anambra State. There, you cannot count five mosques. This, I mean, you are so bamboozled by these so-called Nigerian politicians and the elites that are leading the country. What does Buba Galadima want to do with 200 mosques in Anambra State? If you have 200 mosques in Anambra State, what does it mean? Are you going to build empty mosques? Is it the duty of uh, Governor P2B to build mosques? Is it that there are Muslims that ask for land from Obi and he refused? Is it the government that issue land for people to build mosques, churches, and this? I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> the Christians that are so many in Anambra State, I know they have lands. The, you buy land, you build what you want. The only thing that concerns the government is to give you approval for the thing you want to build. If you want to build uh, an industry in the middle of uh, a residential area, they can only say no. Buy land if your problem is mosque. Build them. I thank God that he said there are some, but not up to five. Then again, what is the impute of mosques and all these churches and everything to human development in Nigeria? Are you telling me that if Juan Kwaso won the presidency, he will build mosques all over Nigeria? When people are talking of building industries, building schools, building hospitals, things that we add value to the society, develop the place. You guys have been busy building mosques since you started politics. And today, and churches still, Nigeria is where it is. Is mosque now the symbol of development in Nigeria? Is it the symbol of love? How a governor loves people from other places? Is it a symbol of, uh, I don't, I don't dev what, geez, what is this? In Kano State, there are um, a lot of uh, visitors, a very huge city. I know it's a Muslim place. There are churches. And I'm quite sure that it's not the government that go and say, oh, come and take land, build a church. I have never seen any group saying that in Anambra State they were denied from building a, a mosque. I don't know. I don't know why. You see, we, we see the people. You see how their mentality is. Supposing Kwan Kwaso becomes president of Nigeria. This is what they will be doing, building mosques, building churches, building everything, religion, religion, religion. It's okay. You can bet. I, I thought you would say something like that he drove them away from doing their business. He didn't allow them to make any economic value or impact in Anambra State. No, 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 no. That's not important. What is important is they are not building mosques. Go to Anambra State and buy land. Build most all over the place. And by the way, I don't know the number of northerners living in Anambra State or Imo State or this thing that we use those mosques. If once there are many and they have the facilities, they will build. I don't know if in the north it is the government that is building the mosques for this, uh, for Muslims and Christians, building churches for Christians. I think when a group of worshippers gather together, and they want to worship God, then they seek out a place, construct a structure to befit them. It goes for a couple of years, the money they will raise it gradually. So these men do not have anything good for Nigeria. They have been in government. Let's tell ourselves the truth. The so-called northerners, 
Go there and tell me the development they have brought to the people. Talakawas everywhere, beggars everywhere, children carrying stick in the street begging, young children hawking ground north and all these kind of things in the streets, 10 years, 12 years, nobody cares. They just want to be the few king makers in the north, the few billionaires. And in the evening, people were lying up in front of your house begging for, your for food. You feed them and they are happy that they have eaten and you're happy that you're rich. You are not rich. You are poor because... Stop giving people fish to eat. Show them how to catch fish. Then the environment is rich. When you are a king in the midst of one million blind people, you are blind yourself. Goodness me, I'm so disappointed in this man that he opened his mouth and is talking this kind of thing today. He said he's a crit, uh, 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 number one critic of Buhari. The daughter is working in the presidency. So I don't know where they stand. These are the people that stood in the middle and refused Kwan Kwasa, the NNPP, to form an alliance with Labour Party. Now, they said, oh, B is a local a politician, is a ethnic politician, is a ethnic by God, this, that, that's everything that uh, this Kwan Kwaso NNPP and this Baba Galadema, Baba Galadema, we are saying. Little did they know what will happen after the election. Let's ask ourselves. Between Kwan Kwaso and P2B, who is an ethnic by God? Who is a local politician? Because Kwan Kwaso won only in Kano State, his own state. That is the only place he won anything. He didn't win any other thing in any other northern zone, southwest zone, southeast zone, south south zone. No, but P2B won in the southeast zone. One in Southwest Lagos, one in the North, Masarawa State, and all those places. He got these votes. So between Kwan Kwaso and the P2B, between NNPP and Labour Party, which one is a regional party? Which one is a party for an ethnic group? Let us. Stop using this accusation of premodal uh, 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 tendencies to paint other people black. It's like a kettle calling a pot black. This is my end of uh, analysis and um, uh, uh, on this man, Bubba Galadimo of NNPP. Please kindly like this video, share it, and subscribe to our channel. We bring it very hot sometimes. See you. In our next update, remain blessed.